Grounded no more. The Boeing 737 MAX set to take flight in the U.S. again tomorrow. This coming after two crashes in the last two years, still fresh in the minds of loved ones, demanding answers and accountability. Here's ABC's Bob Woodruff. It was a brand new model called the Boeing 737 MAX 8. They didn't understand the danger that they were walking into. What started out as routine flights oh, up. quickly became a pilot's worst nightmare. The plane had flown into the sea you know, at full speed. With two airplanes down and 346 people killed, by 2019, Boeing becoming the focus of a global firestorm. Now, nearly two years after being grounded, Boeing 737 MAX, with significant changes, is set to carry U.S. passengers once again. The MAX was born out of Boeing's need to keep up with its closest competitor, Airbus. Instead of developing an entirely new plane to catch up with Airbus, they decide to take a shortcut and revamp a model that's already on the market, saving them a lot of extra time and money. One of the big customers early on was a young budget carrier in Indonesia called Lion Air. It was a huge deal. Lion Air had asked Boeing about simulator training for their pilots, and Boeing dissuaded them from this. Now, according to internal Boeing documents, one of their employees ridiculed the request in a message to a colleague saying, now, Lion Air might need a sim to fly the MAX, and maybe because of their own stupidity, I'm scrambling, trying to figure out how to unscrew this now. Idiots. Well, they were mocking them because if Lion Air required simulator training, then other airlines would say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If they're requiring it, maybe we need it. Then the whole house of cards would start to fall apart. On the early morning of October 29th, 2018, at the airport in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia, Lion Air Flight 610 was getting ready to take off. Its destination was the city of Pangkal Penang, which is located on the Indonesian island of Bangka. Very shortly after the flight takes off, you know, the pilots are struggling with the plane. The stick shaker pops off. It is loud and it is rattling in the captain's hands. Just 10 minutes later, a tugboat captain was out on the Java Sea, just east of Jakarta. When news of the crash broke, I immediately flew in from Beijing, where I was based at the time. So the sun has just gone down, and you can see uh, all the police officers along this dock. These crews have been pulling up and carrying out <laughs> debris piece by piece. There was no way anyone could have survived. When we found the black box, we found that the aircraft was pitching up and then down, down and up and down and up. It's up and down for about 24 times. It was revealed that pilots were rifling through the pilot manual, trying to, apparently, figure out what to do. Turns out that Boeing had installed a flight control system on the 737 MAX that had the power to take control of the plane from the pilots without them even knowing about it. The program was called MCAS. MCAS, Maneuvering Characteristics augmentation system, and that this system, under certain circumstances, can trigger in such a way that it will cause the airplane to nose down. So the reason they put MCAS on the airplane was because they put these brand new huge engines on an old airframe. And that changed the way the airplane flew. And this effect of the engines came in and the airplane starts to want to pitch up all by itself. The idea was to provide something that would offset that pitching moment or causing the nose to come up. The pilots have no idea why this plane is going down against their will, so they tried to fight it back. Yes, and the way MCAS was designed, it was given the control authority to do it as many times as necessary. In other words, it was given the power to try to kill them, essentially, until it finally succeeded. Just a few days later, Boeing tells operators for the first time that there's a new and previously undisclosed system on the aircraft, 
and that is MCAS. That was a shock. It's not in our manuals at all, except in one section, our abbreviation section. We didn't know what MCAS meant. It meant nothing to us. Pilots were furious. Pilot unions asked Boeing, why didn't you tell us if you put something on the airplane that's going to actually interfere with my job? The bottom line here is the 737 MAX is safe. And the safety is a core value for us at Boeing. But then, four months later, another fatal crash. This time, an Ethiopian Airlines flight carrying 157 passengers. First, Indonesia. Now, Ethiopia. The big question here is, has the same thing happened? The faulty angle of attack sensor triggered the activation of MCAS right after takeoff, and that is almost exactly what happened on the Lion Air aircraft. Despite similarities between the two crashes, this time there was a huge difference. Not only the Ethiopian Airlines pilots knew about MCAS, they also followed Boeing's instruction on how to disable it. To better understand why those pilots could not recover control of the plane, we asked two experienced American Airlines pilots and members of the Allied Pilots Association to take us through what might have occurred in that Ethiopian Airlines cockpit based on information from the black boxes. So in here, what will we see? In this airplane, while it is not a MAX, the displays are very similar. But what's unique about the MAX, in this case, is the MCAS. Shortly after the takeoff, faulty data from the plane's angle of attack sensor triggers a myriad of false alerts in that cockpit. The stick shaker is shaking continuously, very loud. In the middle of all these distractions, MCAS suddenly activates. MCAS is firing. Starts to push the nose down. I'm pulling back. It was at this point that the Ethiopian Airlines pilots followed Boeing's instructions and cut off electronic power to the stabilizer in the plane's tail. But the problem now is that the nose is so far down, they're having trouble holding it back, it. yeah. In a last ditch effort, the Ethiopian pilots decided to turn the electronic stabilizer system back on. The MCAS fires. And this fire goes and goes. I'm pulling back. I'm pulling back. A little bit of trip. And now the nose is pointing down, and it's over. Stop the sim. All of us at Boeing are deeply sorry for the loss of life in the Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 and Lion Air Flight 610 accidents. He's sorry that we lost our family members. He doesn't take any accountability for having caused their deaths. Nadia Milleron's 25-year-old daughter, Samya, was on the Ethiopian Airlines flight. She and her husband quickly turned their anguish into action. Michael and Nadia fly to Chicago and file the first lawsuit against Boeing by an American family. I want her death not to be in vain. I don't want anybody else to die. Nadia and Michael, along with more than 100 other families of victims around the world, alleged that Max had a defective design and that Boeing issued inadequate warnings about the plane, something that Boeing denies. Lawmakers held congressional hearings into what went wrong with the 737 MAX. The committee uncovered emails and communications showing that there had been lower level employees who raised questions several times about MCAS. These are questions of life and death, but that's not how they treated them in the company. Some Boeing employees openly questioned the safety culture of the company during development of the 737 MAX. In one email, a worker said, frankly, right now all my internal warning bells are going off and for the first time in my life, I'm sorry to say that I'm hesitant about putting my family on a Boeing airplane. The safety culture was eviscerated under production pressure. Boeing has since fired Dennis Muhlenberg as their CEO, and the company currently faces a criminal investigation led by the Justice Department. The investigation is focused on whether Boeing withheld information from regulators. But with the MAX set to return to U.S. commercial service tomorrow, clouds of suspicion over Boeing remain.
Earlier this month, a report released by Senate investigators found that Boeing officials inappropriately coached FAA test pilots during the MAX's recertification process. In response, Boeing said that it takes the committee's findings seriously and will continue to review the report in full. However, the company has made a number of changes to its MAX plane. MCAS will now rely on two sensors and will only activate once. Pilots will also be required to complete flight simulator training, and in a statement to ABC News, Boeing said it had made a series of meaningful changes to strengthen our company's safety practices and culture. I don't want other mothers and other families to go through this. I don't want them to be trying to hear their daughter's voice and, you know, wonder what you would say to them. People shouldn't innocently buy an airplane ticket and then be in a flying coffin. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.